Will coronavirus keep resurging when lockdowns are lifted? And what's most likely to bring it to an end? With the virus spreading globally, it's unlikely that warmer seasons will kill it off, though they may help slow the spread and buy time to prepare for the next surge. It's likely that the pandemic can only be prevented from resurging when at least half the world's population has become immune. And that can happen in only one of two ways. After enough people have been infected and have recovered, or have been inoculated with a vaccine. So which will come first? And how can we contain the virus after the lockdown? Studies suggest answers that will shape government advice, but also show why it's crucial to follow the science ourselves. Social distancing may bring coronavirus down to levels where it's possible to trace and isolate cases, but it will be difficult to halt the virus this way. South Korea showed that aggressive testing can be very effective. It traced infected people and their movements and published the information. Testing is our greatest weapon against the virus. It will also uncover the true death rate, which varies widely, even within America. Ultimately, countries that succeed in tracing and crushing the virus are likely to be reinfected by others. So when will a vaccine become available? As vaccines are given to healthy people, it's extremely important to make sure they are safe. That means extensive testing. So 18 months is, is about what we'd expect. We're doing everything we can. You know, we'll write checks for those factories faster than governments can, and they'll come along. It definitely shouldn't be money limited. How can we reopen the world while keeping the virus under control? Studies point to ideas which might shape life for some time. In China, popular apps indicate where people can go based on their health status. The system also reflects levels of economic activity, some of which correlates with the spread of the virus. This means that app data could be used to predict the spread, cutting out the incubation period which delays official figures. The researchers recommend using this live picture to constantly adjust control measures to ensure a manageable second wave, the overriding public health priority. The key measure to watch is the effective reproduction number, the transmission rate at a given time. When it's below one, cases are declining. Above one, they are increasing. Real-time estimates are crucial because the precise timing of control measures makes a huge difference. Many experts believe we must all prepare for several cycles of a suppress and lift policy. So what might future waves look like? A report which helped trigger the lockdowns also contained this model, suggesting regular social distancing and school closures to keep intensive care cases at a manageable level. None of us have ever seen anything like this. Apart from two patients, every patient we're looking after has got COVID. We can't cope with a big spike. We just can't. A recent survey found that 60% of people always followed government guidelines. 27% complied nearly all the time and only 1% ignored the advice. Enforcement varies widely around the world. Singapore recently introduced large penalties after the virus resurged, despite a widely praised early response. Sweden has refused to shut down, and early signs point to a surprising lesson. Not in the number of deaths, which would likely be even higher in more densely populated countries, but because it's not expected to dodge the economic impact of the virus. The capital streets are about 70% less busy than usual. In the US, a poll found that 57% of people with a conservative news diet believed that the coronavirus posed a similar risk to seasonal flu. It's a virus like the flu. All the talk about coronavirus being so much more deadly doesn't reflect reality. This virus should be compared to the flu because at worst, at worst, worst case scenario, it could be the flu. In reality, it is at least 10 to 20 times more deadly. 
misinformation spread through a rich network, crippling America's defenses. An evangelical preacher said the virus was designed to enrich pharmaceutical companies and that his congregation would refuse to take the vaccine. America is a hotbed of conspiracy theories, with over 50% of people believing in at least one. At the more wacky end, millions believed that the shift to fluorescent light bulbs was a government attempt to make people easier to control. And some believe Finland doesn't exist, arguing that no real country could so consistently place first in education, healthcare and literacy rates. Finland has also been rated Europe's most resistant nation to fake news. A national programme teaches everyone, from primary school pupils to politicians, how to detect and fight false information. Finland is also doing well in the fight against coronavirus. It has classified social media influencers as critical actors during the crisis. In the US, fake news is more likely to be shared than real news. And a study found Fox News viewers to be less informed than people who don't watch any news. Could the virus force a renewed focus on science and shared facts? South Korea and the US saw their first cases of the virus on the same day, but different responses led to starkly different outcomes. And failing to control the virus has caused huge economic damage. When Anthony Fauci said that calls for early action to tackle the virus had been ignored, Trump threatened to fire him. But Fauci's approval rating is far higher than Trump's, and changing the person would not change the science. Considering the challenge of controlling the virus globally when it can rapidly resurge from a small number of people, it's easy to see why some experts expect it to become endemic. But some very rough calculations show why we can't give up the fight. Dr. Hanage notes that if we assume the UK is halfway through its first wave, and that testing will increase case numbers by five times, this would leave around 98% of the population without immunity. And it's a very similar picture in the US. Based on current data, reaching herd immunity in the UK would require about 600,000 deaths. That's greater than the total UK military and civilian deaths during World War II. If we look at the 20th century and we look at the death chart of the 20th century, I think everybody would say, oh yeah, there must be a spike for World War I. You know, sure enough, there it is, like 25 million. And there must be a big spike for World War II, and there it is, it's like 65 million. But then you'll see this other spike that is as large as World War II right after World War I. And most people, a lot of people would say, well, what? <laughs> what was that? Will coronavirus be as deadly? It depends on how long this continues and whether we place science above politics. Progress is made in times of war. The Cold War led to one of our most unifying achievements with the astronauts' lives resting on precise calculations. A far cry from today's flat Earth society. In the war on the virus, with so many lives in the balance, perhaps healthcare will be recognized as a human right. Without it, people are less likely to see a doctor when they have symptoms, and without a diagnosis, less likely to isolate themselves. In the UK, underfunding of the NHS left it highly stretched even before the pandemic. Surely now is the time to transform all our health systems. Wouldn't that be a beautiful victory? The first moon landing was made with just 15 seconds of fuel remaining. And his words might be more fitting today, as we're all critical to this mission, supporting our heroes on the front lines. These nurses wore bin bags for protection and all caught coronavirus. We can't rely on governments to get everything right. And there is one big piece of government advice that we should all carefully consider ignoring. 
central meeting places dramatically increase the spread of the virus. When the call is made that it's time to return to work, let's check the science and data for ourselves. You know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat. And you it's said it was going to go in, away in it's April. You said when it warmed up in April. I said it's going away, and it is going away. You're going to lose a number of people to the flu. Ago, you say this was just like a flu. What have you learned? I didn't say two weeks ago it was a flu. Weeks.